In this episode, I'll share an interview I did a while back with international dressage trainer and writer Luis Lucio of Spain. He has competed at the highest levels, and he's also explored and embraced natural horsemanship. So I'll be asking him how he knows his horses are happy and what he does to keep his horses happy, even with the demands of competition. I think you're going to really love this conversation. So here we go. Episode 65, Happy Horses with Louis Lucio. Hi, I'm Karen Rolfe, and welcome to Horse Training in Harmony. This podcast is about you making progress with your horse in a way that you both can love. It's about learning how to move and be in harmony. Because yes, you really can develop a horse to be both athletic and happy. When we show up as our best selves for our horses, our horses will show up for us. So let's get started. Well, welcome everyone to another Happy Horse interview. And I'm here with Louis Lucio. And um, he has a very impressive resume, which I'm going to add a link to because it's it's almost too long to read here, but to give you an idea, <laughs> he's an active dressage rider and trainer, and he gives clinics all over the world uh, as a rider. He was a member of the Spanish dressage team at the Olympics in 96 at the Atlanta Games and in 2000 in Sydney. Uh, as a trainer, he's been the dressage trainer of riders in dressage, eventing, show jumping, para equestrian at international competitions, including European World Games and Olympic Games. Uh, his pupils have won more than 100 medals in Spanish championships, and it goes on and on. I'll add the link to that. Um, I met Lewis through the Pirellis, I think it was back in 2004, Lewis, 2004 or five, and um, was able to visit him, in Sp him and his beautiful horses in Spain. Uh, so I'm thrilled to have you here. Uh, you've been a part of the Two Worlds Together Summit with the Pirelli, so I know you're really interested in um, horses' well-being and doing the best for them as we do dressage. So thank you for being here. Thank you for inviting me. I knew that you were doing this kind of uh, meetings with friends and horse uh, people, and I am really, really proud and very um, happy to be here with you. Thank you for thinking about me. Yeah, yeah. So this all started, Lewis, because uh, one of my students asked me once, like, how do I know if my horse is happy? And I answered him as best I could, but it really got me thinking. And it got me thinking, wondering what other professionals, mm -hmm. how other professionals think about it. So that's what really started this whole interview series. So. Mm -hmm. Um, actually, before I even ask you how, how you know if your horse is happy, I'd love to, to hear from you how much does happiness matter? Like, how much does your horse's happiness matter? How much is it a part of what you think about with your own horses? Yeah. Well, this, um, this is a very uh, complex concept, huh? because I think once we accept that we ride horses, we are bringing the situation to a, a certain amount of unnatural mood because horses are free and we just decide to ride them. And then, of course, my point of view begins once we not only accept that we ride because we are professionals, that we also accept we do sport with them. We would be a second step because let's say that you can find an ethic explanation about riding as a partnership, as, as a hacking, as a, okay. But then when you bring to the sport the horses that they have to do a physical effort with an emotional level of stress that is uh, inducted, created by the situation of the sport itself, that makes the ethics of it in, in, in conflict. And then, of course, for a person like me to begin to think about that, one non-horse people will say, okay, but you are already in a, 
in a gray area because you are riding in your dream sport with us. Then I accept it. I ride and I uh, have my life and my profession and my, 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 my heart is with sport horses. Once we have said that, who, that I will say this a certain amount of uh, an ethics, could be, mm -hmm. then my, my thinking is how can I do sport with horses the best for the horses? And then there are also two lines. This is my own actions as a rider when I ride, who is an uh, important part of my life, has been a very important part, especially till the last years. And the second part is how I help all the riders that do sport to do it the best for the horses. This is a second part. Then in any cases, we need to begin from a certain acceptance that horses are ridden and especially they are not asking for it that then it would be some um, some issues or some uh, ethical remarks that i need to accept and i i try to to fix it huh? but then once the say if we go to how we do happy horses to do sport happy athletes then is a big a big area and i try to 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 do it my best especially since 2000s that I, I i i met parelis and i meet you and some other experts that made me think about how i can do it and i try to do my best now, there is many things that we can discuss uh, about how i do how i understand and how i make but of course the happiness of an athlete is very important i would say that is the the key of the success and a happy athlete, I don't think can perform for a good level. And also an unhappy sport practice makes big troubles. Then I think just for the results, just for the ethics, just for the way of thinking, happiness should be there in our daily work. Also with sport horses in Dresden, of course. Awesome. Yeah, I think that I love that you started with that, putting it out there that it is unnatural for us to ride. And I think so many times there's this underlying assumption that horses should be serving us, that they are beasts of burden, and it's taken for granted. And I like to wake up every day and think, this is amazing that they let us do this. And to be really aware that they did not ask for one piece of this, not one piece of their life. It's all under our control. So um, I love that you have that in the, that was the first thing you even mentioned. So um, yeah. So, so do you think it's possible for horses to be happy in training? I mean, the, the object of dressage, according to the FEI, is the development of the horse into a happy athlete. Um, so you do, do you think it's possible? I think it's possible. And I think, I think in a certain way, every sport rider in the world tries and thinks he's trying. Um, <laughs> I think our job, the more we, try to become experts in, in horse behavior and, 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 and we understand how they behave and how they act in front of our demands on our actions, then it's important that we as help us and the others to understand how these uh, roles of acting, answering and and feeling is, is, is for the horses, especially when we have to bring the horses to an extra um, effort, like it means to do a sport, because it's more, that means fatigue, means performance, means traveling, different social life, more um, confinement in the stables, mm -hmm. extra stress. And that should have an extra attention and a, a, a special training to make the horses keep that uh, accepting it and, and, and living with happiness. That's why uh, we will, for sure, we'll have time to, to come to that. We need to use some tools to control this level of stress. That's why mm -hmm. I began some years ago 
to thinking about the heart rate because this is a very basic, natural, clear and no invasive tool that gives you an immediate and objective data about the stress. This is true that we can also talk later that in sometimes it, it depends on the horsenality of the horses. Um, uh, they can have stress and go lower in the heart rate. But normally uh, the amount of stress comes directly to the amount of heart rate. And that could be a very nice tool for riders and trainers to know where we are and take better yeah. decisions. Yeah, and I, I, you know, I know you've done a lot of stuff with the heart rate monitor. I think that's really cool because, um, you know, if you think of on a scale, we have happiness and joy and whatever on one end, and we have, you know, total stress, anxiety, learned helplessness on the other, and we need to just make sure that we're moving, we're moving towards happiness, and sometimes that's going from stress to not stress, and then some baseline of like. I'm okay, you know, it's good. And then we can think about how do we move from like, yeah, I'm fine, to wow, I love this. Come on, ask me to pee off again, you know. Yeah. So I love that you have this this tool of really measuring where are they, you know, at least on that scale and at least know when they're going into the anxiety part. So a very interesting concept, yeah. To, yeah. To yeah, no. So, so to the original question, yeah. how do you know if your horse is happy? Well, happiness is shown by a way of behave. It's an offer of energy, an, an energy that is controlled, that has um, coherent behavior. That means that the energy comes when it's needed and disappears when there's no time to show it. Mm -hmm. is a kind of a um, understanding um, which is which is the job and doing it with no hesitation and just with no pressure or very reduced pressure and is a attitude in front of new demands uh, mm -hmm. um, for example sometimes we are training horses to do difficult exercises and we do breaks like this is very important, yes, free reins, no messages, even if the horse wants to stand is a, is, is a great thing to make him in the break. And then when you retake the reins, if the horse says, what should they do? They, this is a kind of happiness. It's like, I was now thinking a video that I saw of our friend Pat doing cutting cows. These horses cut the cows, then they like, they, they, what, what should they do? What should they do? Yeah, they don't even need a rider on them. They'll yeah. do it sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> Even with no rider, the fact sometimes the riders, they, their job is hold the saddle to don't fall off. These horses are having fun and taking decisions because one thing that you say before, very interesting, is that when we ride, we try to, to erase the decisions of the horse. Huh? Mm -hmm. And this is it's a terrible thing. Then we need to find activities or even in our daily activity, find the moments where the horse can take some initiatives take some decisions and follow it to make them feel happy. That means it's, 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 it's a long way, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a long list of possibilities that you can have to judge how happy the horse is. Especially when he see you in the stable, when you talk with him or we touch it, how confident it is, how he's ready to offer whatever you ask, how quick he comes back to relaxation after an effort, how he can anticipate your wishes in order to do it earlier and finish and stay. I think, of course, the, the heart rate in, 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 in rest, there are many, many options to the, 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 the corporal, the gestural language, the teeth, mm -hmm. the ears, the tail, the, the breathing, the sweating, in extreme cases, of course, there is a many, many ways of, yeah. of, of finding it, I think. Yeah, and that's something that keeps coming up is is what you said that willingness to show up. Like that. It's like, oh, they're picking up the reins. What do I do? Or, oh, look, there's Lewis. Hi, <laughs> you know. And uh, it's that feeling of if they have uh, this moment of choice, 
the in that split second when you go are you ready they're like yeah and and that you also can see if they're like uh, no you know if they look away or something so that that willingness to show up that general and and you describe sort of a very general picture it's not just one thing ears up does not mean my horse is happy it's it's many many factors and I think it probably takes a lot of feel, right? You're, you're feeling all of these things from your horse and putting together a picture of, does that paint a picture of an overall willing, participating, cooperating horse? Yeah. Cause sometimes I think there's trainers who can make horses do stuff and they can still perform but they're not necessarily happy. And this is what's really interesting to me because you can get horses to do stuff. Horses are amazing and they'll do stuff sometimes even if they're not happy. Absolutely. So how do we tell the difference between like a horse who just does his job and he knows how to stay out of trouble by doing his job and a horse that, or even a horse that might be scared, like, oh, I better do it. Um, and a horse that's willing. I mean, this is really getting subtle maybe, but how can we tell? I think there are two concepts that are very interesting in these areas. One could be how far the horse is doing by himself. Mm -hmm. I always, for example, I remember this morning we were training one of the horses and the job was just getting some um, steps of shorter steps, quicker tempo in Kanta. It is a very, very interesting exercise. And then I, uh, in a certain moment, my rider was getting the result. Then I said, okay, good. I'll give you the horse a break and say, how far is the horse doing it? Because you are making it. If I make a photo, the, the picture is there, compact and quick the tempo. But in the moment of execution, you were asking or the horse was doing it? And then she said, oh, the horse, I was asking for it. Then we need to try to let the horse alone and check what happens. Then, I mean, the, the decrease of the pressure in the moment of the results give you a very clear picture about how far you are making it or how far the horse is making it for you. And of course, in the high competition, even if there are like always big critics about the sport, horses who want to get high level, they perform a little by themselves. There is no chance to force to do, okay, you can do it, but this is just a short term. Yeah. That was one concept. And the other concept is also give the horses time to react. That This is a, a, a very interesting concept that I think you were one of the, of the first ones or even the first one who helped me in that because you, you told me a, a very famous sentence, but you were the one who told me for the first time because since this year I have heard that a thousand times. You told me music is silence between notes. Do you remember? I do. <laughs> I was an expert to make him do it. But you say me, okay, but your music is too constant. Just give some silence that the horse can think, realize, eventually stop doing it and then you help it again or not. This is a very interesting concept that if we give, give them time, we first, we know what happens. We give in also the, 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 the luxury of the release and then they have sometimes time to understand and to do it by themselves. Mm -hmm. And many times our timing is too short that the second help comes too early then the horse don't even accept the first one. And then he says, no, this is a very exciting in trailer loading. That's why I think Pirelli work online is so interesting because riders, they learn the timing when to add again a message, like going to the trailer. If you just make it, he goes back. But if you give it time, as Pat says, for the nose and perhaps the feet and perhaps the neck, then this time and stop asking, they are quite nice concepts that I think will, will help us in this area that you asked me about how are they be happy about themselves? Yeah. yeah, I love that. And it really, it's, um, it's, a, it's really into the conversation that you're having with the horse in these little split seconds. And horses that I, that I get that have been trained 
um, not that way, who have been, maybe they're very obliging and they've been controlled. So they will do what they're asked, but if you lighten your aids, they just, <laughs> they're dead in the water. And what I find in these moments where you're educating them, you're like, when I do this, and then what are you going to do with that information? And the moment they realize that they can think and they can like, I know the answer. It's sometimes it's like, a, that's when I feel they start to feel proud. They get beyond obliging and they move into pride. Like I've got the answer. And it's a very private little moment. And I think we always, I know I have to learn this again and again is to train and then take my aids away, show them and then take them away. And, and time and time again, when I move a horse up the levels, I have to remember to do less and less and less. And that's what keeps them happy in, in the ride, among other things. But yeah, cool. So important message to, yeah. to be able to just let the horse alone doing it and, and giving time. And there is also a, a very um, important concept is that when the horse takes the decision a little bit by, by himself, he lands it. If, if we make it do it, they do it, but they don't take nothing on board. But if they do it by themselves, there is a learning moment that can give us in the future again, the same, the same situation. Yeah, cool. So have, have you had horses that you had come, come into training with you that you feel like, oh, this is not a happy horse or maybe in a particular horse, they go through a phases. Are there certain things that you do to say, okay, I got to make this horse happier. Like what are some things you, that you might think of doing? And maybe, maybe this is where, you know, every horse is different. So you might have had one horse where like, okay, this horse needs this sort of thing. And this other horse, he needed this other sort of thing. Like, any stories or examples of things like that? Yeah, to, to find this certain happiness in, in every horse is for every horse an history because everyone, they have different personalities, they have different history, and they are reacting uh, different with, to the same uh, um, messages. I think the more important first is yes, understand which is the particular psychology of the horse, if they are more dominant, or if they are more afraid, to know the story of it. That's why it's so important for me. That's what happens because now uh, in my riding training is just 40% and, and 60 or 70% is just training overs. Then that's why always in my lessons, I let riders ride their own for a while with no messages because I want to know them, how they deal with the pressure. And a very exciting thing is talk about their horses, about their riding before they ride. That they tell you, even when they are on a horse, walking or standing still before the lesson, that they tell you how is the horse, which are the problems, which are the nice areas, where are the, the issues, what I have, how they think the horse is, if it is lazy or overreactive, or if it's against him. And yes, the language of the rider telling you um, how is his way of understanding what happens gives you a lot of information about the level of uh, accuracy in dealing with uh, the problems. And then once you feel, that you see that and you know how is the horse and how is the habit of, of the rider to dealing with him, um, I think it's important to follow just yes, general rules that apply 80% of the riders that I find. For example, have a plan in your lesson. Every time you ride, you have to have a plan. What I would like to do, why, how long, which is the principal part of the lesson today, how can I achieve it, and which warm up I will do, how long I will try, we will finish, and then how many breaks and rewards I give in the intertime. Just a plan helps so many riders to know how to deal with problems because they just begin with, with just a purpose and the purpose is the same intensity and message 
from minute one till minute 60 and it cannot be it cannot be and then just organize the tasks um, in, um deal with manage the intensity because this is one of the biggest problems we have with the impulsion concept people mm -hmm. yes yes going forward this forward thing as i think is creating so much frustration in riders on horses that any other thing that the the, the forward and the contact they are the two things that create more frustration huh? mm -hmm. and yes adapt the level of activity to the moment or to demand read the answers of the horses and give them enough breaks for they to recover not physically because they are very fit mentally uh -huh. and then give them rewards playing with less repetitions or easy exercises or finish the session or do another thing uh -huh. in, 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 a, in a general um, plan of the week and of the month or of the year of your horse then i think Sometimes we, 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 we forget that we are not riders, we are just trainers, whatever is our level, because we ride the horse and the horse is just waiting for us. Even beginners, they, they, they train, because, even if they don't know, yeah. <laughs> what they are training horses to, to just feel bad or better or repeat or just get <laughs> bored about doing circles. And, and if we just have this feeling of we are really trainers and we have to do a serious job, then perhaps we, we, we take more care about the decisions that we do. Mm, yeah. I don't know if I was close of your answer or, or I went out to an hour. <laughs> no, or... no, I think, I think that's good because, you know, those are all things that if we don't do that, that's what's going to send us the other direction on the scale. So, you know, it's a, it's a fluid thing and, and just making sure we're not heading in the wrong direction. And these are very tangible things you can think about. I'd love to ask you a little more about what you said about rewards, because you listed a few things, you know, and sometimes people think a reward is just a piece of carrot or something, but you said, you said, give them a break or go do something else or um, like, what are some things if, if you had a horse that did something really well, during a ride or maybe they did something well one day and you wanted to reward them the next. Exactly. Like what are, yeah. What are some things, what's in the range? I know you take your horses on trail rides and I mean, they're working trail rides sometimes, but um, it's a change of scenery, you know? Yeah. So what are, what are some things if you're like, I, this horse was fantastic. I'm going to do this thing for like, what's some range of how you reward your horses? I mean, the reward, has to be in a daily, weekly, monthly plan, always. Um, reward can be decrease the pressure. Reward can be work less time. Reward can be do the same with less activity. Reward can be give less messages. Reward can be don't give messages, just let the horse take decisions or go uh, for a hacking every two days, or reward can be finished for a hacking every single training day, or there are so many, but we need to, to, to establish a kind of communication. That means, come on, let's go down from my stables to the arena, and then the horse goes online, or every day we work um, first a little, we do parallel online, and then um, reward can be just let the horse eat or look around or stay, stay a little time looking or, or you, when you ride, um, don't begin with a difficult thing. Mm -hmm. Or once you make a little uh, improvement, don't do it again. And do easy things. So, I mean, so many re rewards mainly the decrease of pressure in the reins because that comes connected with the contact concept of the dressage, you know? We, we know that in the training scale, the contact is something that is quite difficult to get and quite difficult to understand. And many um, riders all over the world think that contact means to take the horse strong, that the horse yeah. takes you and you take it. And this is very um, difficult 
for a writer to understand that the more important that, that you need to be able to do with a horse is give the reins and retake it. Nothing should change. And then when you train for the first time a rider who has never done, please give and retake the race. Then they ask you, but what? Just give and retake the race. But then I lose the contract. Of course, you have to, you need to, to lose it as many times as possible. But the, the, the contract should be constant. But the contact is not that you take, the contact should be what the horse wants to take. Because the horse shows confidence to take the mouth, to the, the beat, and shows willing to keep going, then he will like to take you. That's why if you go forward with your hand slowly, the horse should stretch. But contact doesn't mean I have a good contact because the horse is pulling, and he doesn't pull, I pull you. This is a, also with the impulsion concept who creates so much frustration then if i would say which is the best reward that we can do with sport horses when i do normal training is yes please give the reins more often but more often means not every five minutes you can do some three or four steps steps or in the middle of every single transition you have to be able the fact judges they want to see that in shows and in the test there are special moments where the rider should show good balance giving ball race to show that the horse is there by himself that we are not keeping them but of course that with the general concept of contact give us a lot of frustration for riders and and and, and horses then i will choose for a word yes give the race often awesome i love that because you're really giving you know we started with this conversation of is it is it ethical to ride you know so we're riding the horse, maybe it's not so ethical, but the, the, and so many people think in order for their horse to be happy, it's like a choice. Like my horse can be happy or I'm going to do sport. Yeah. And what you're really talking about is within sport, within the actual session, within how you ride dressage, that this priority of self carriage, the priority of letting the horse be educated instead of controlled it's these little you know nuanced but very powerful things that you're saying that's all really inside the ride itself so i love that i'm 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 gonna be remembering all this when i ride tomorrow you know i mean it's it's the same priorities that i have but it's so fun to hear somebody who's you know, a competitor, you know, an international competitor and trainer like yourself and, and highlighting these moments, because I think. Uh, and I have to say that just giving the reins in any moment gives you the real uh, idea how good the horse is there mm -hmm. and gives you the possibility to ask for more energy and give the horse the possibility to move the high legs because the high legs and high legs and pushing and carrying of course, no horse can move the high legs if you are not allowing him in front. It doesn't mean that when you give the horse the stretches, he can be doing PF with no contact and taking the contact, no contact, and keep moving the high legs quick. But the horse knows he's there, carrying himself, and you are not holding the thing to don't run away. He's there, like, right. like accepting the position and the job. And then coming to that, talking about the activity and the giving, for example, then someone could say, oh, but you are talking about the horse be strong, moving like high legs in Piaf with giving a retake and the horse stays there. This is a stressful. Yes, in the moment of the Piaf, it's a stressful. It is if stressful means high heart rate. Could be not too higher, no higher than the counter. 120, 130 could be, but the problem would come if you stop the Piaf, you let the range longer and you cannot walk you cannot stand still and the horse doesn't go down. But I promise you, to get a very good PF, you need to be able to give. And also, you need to be able to get release and the horse relaxes because if the horse keeps accumulate, accumulating stress, the next day you are not doing PF. And in some days they will just rear or run away. Then mm -hmm. the, the, the activity means always a big um, dose of understanding and coping and willing and relaxing itself. And then 
is not bad. It's not so important how high is the horse doing something because it depends on even the horse and all of the horses. The more important is how quick they come down and how relaxed they are when they know now is no PF. Now you can stand still and look around. And I promise you, and you know because you are an expert rider, you can do top PF and, and one second later, let the horse look around and he can look there, a bird or... And he drops to 70 or 65% in 30 seconds from yeah. and that's what make us the feeling that the horses are happy and then when yeah. you retake the race they say should i do that or i can keep walking yeah, yeah. i give you an example this okay. is not my 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 discipline but you know in spain they have you know what is doma vaquera eh? doma vaquera is the old training that they do with cows they ride with one hand big bits and the job of these horses were keep the rider safe for the bulls. They are not trained to kill bulls. They are just working with wolves to move them, to just take her in the fields. And then these horses, they, 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 they traditionally they have a, a training called the Bavakera who makes them turn quick. They don't trot, they only canter, walk, turn. And then these competitions of that without wool. Yes, they come to the modern age and then now they do in, in arenas. And they have a very, very uh, important exercise is that the horses should go as strong as they can in canter. They stop in and they do kind of sliding stuff. They have to go back again as quick as they can. They do it again two, three times and after two, three times, after it come back, they have to go out long range walk. That means the horse reads, now I have to run away so quick. Mm -hmm. Now I have to do long range walk. And I tell you, if you don't do that nice, you cannot win. And these horses, the good ones, they do. They read. Uh, you see, and we can find also in our sport or even in jumping. They go for it. Look at that's Amazing things, amazing yeah. things. They can do whatever. And the horses are even with no bridle, or whatever, enjoying jumping. And after that, they are playing with him and just, this is, this is, this is a, you can find a kind of happiness in, in, the, in, the, in the hard jobs mm -hmm. or hunting the cows. Huh? Yeah, awesome. That's a great story. <laughs> oh, you've given, you've given us so much to think about. Um, have you had any specific horses that you found challenging? Yes, to... yes, of course, of course. This is this is our lives, like yours. All your <laughs> life training horses. Oh, this is amazing. Uh, many of them. Uh, the, the the more difficult ones um, were the ones who were a little closed, hmm? mm -hmm. shut, shut down, because the the more energetic ones, the 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 ones who look like more difficult because they are like right brain extroverts, at the end they need a little, yes, confidence and calm and they, they, they come. But the ones who are a little closed, uh, they are difficult. And then I have had in, in the last years that I was more involved in horse behavior uh, and always riding with this heart rate, this, I, I am in love of it. I had three, four cases of horses that in front of problems they get, uh, in, in front of pressure and, and, and difficulties, they get lower in the heart rate. That means that they were adapting the, themselves to don't cope, to don't, don't go on. Always, they were horses that had an history of pressure. You could mm -hmm. see in the kind of rider they had or they are on skirts here in, in, the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the, for the spurs, oh, yeah. or the mouth, or, you could see that the history was not good and 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 that was quite challenging but, but very exciting because to make these horses come back to a normal behavior that means if some stimulus come or pressure i have to come up and express myself and if the stimulus is not there i can relax to bring the horses to that which normal from if i get pressure i get lower that was a very uh, exciting uh, work. And I think uh, I, I have to thank uh, Parelli for these uh, strategies online, especially because I know the freestyle, no, the, 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 
how you say, the, the liberty is fantastic. I know, I know. You always tell, Lina always tell me, everyone, but I have, I am not an expert. Then I only did online and I, I am quite good for my basic things doing that. But I know that all these things, because I have very advanced customers who do that, and I can see with we, we liberty, they make a connection with horses, amazing. But okay, that was a little mm, too, too, too late for me. Uh, but I, I, I would do it. If I have time, I would do it. <laughs> but of course, online, I was putting these horses in different situations that they can take decisions, especially no pressure mm -hmm. in the mouth or in the bodies that they can decide, run, respect, and they get they become alive and um, some of them they have contact now um, after the time and the training has been very successful and some others i could see that they could improve a lot with easy strategies to make them feel better when the things were wrong even giving a break or don't put in so much pressure or or just waiting a little more to to ask mm -hmm. it. there are some strategies that can help a lot but of course they were very challenging horses were um, from the ones I, I learned a lot. Yeah. Yeah. I have one that came to me this summer, um, which is the first horse that I've had that really would shut down. And when he was scared, you just see him kind of go introverted. Um, and when he felt pressure and, and if you made him go towards something he wasn't okay with, he would do it, but he wasn't okay and then later would explode. That was his problem he came with. So it's been really interesting for me to, to do what you said, like put him in situations where he can make a decision and let him see that he doesn't have to hide and I'm not going to push him when he's feeling that. And then to see him wake up yeah. and then he decides to go to the thing that was scaring him which is completely different than if I pushed him to Thank it. You so. yeah, absolutely. It's tricky though. It's, I'm not, m most, the horses I have are all very extrovert. <laughs> they, they're right there. So this one has been really making me think. So Pretty cool. Exciting. Well, so much good stuff. Do you, um, do you have any, there's so many things to take away from this talk, but if you had one sentence one thing to leave people with what would be what would be your message um wait a second this is my Sorry. say hello to karen hello you saw when when she was born just born was number linda sent the 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 savvy club member she has already seen she, she was oh. born. <laughs> Wonderful. Well, nice to see you. <laughs> Bye. Bye. <laughs> so, what I would say, this is not a big thing, but this is what I think has helped more riders in my last years training them in, in, in sport all over. Just be better with your breaks and rewards. This is amazing, amazing. Mm -hmm how horses can understand if you give them shorter phases of work and give a, a break for you and for the horse to learn and then you go back again how to distribute the phases and the rewards with a general concept of rewards like thank you or decrease pressure or i do an easy thing i think with just these two tools mm -hmm. with with basic poor techniques Horses can learn, can be happy, and willing to do it, and offering, and, and, and change absolutely the motivation. With just these two things, thinking about how long to work, when do a break, and how and when reward. And there is always time, there is always a moment to reward, and always a moment to do a break. And horses are so clever, and they, they, they find exciting the next Face. I would say that is an. I know that is an easy thing, but I am very pro. Very, uh, I love easy things that help <laughs> people and horses to do better. Huh? Uh, I think that's a that's a great thing to leave people with because I know most humans when things are getting challenging, um, 
I, in my experience, have trouble taking a break. And right when you need to take the break is when they're like, I'm just going to one more time. <laughs> Let's try it again. So yeah, I think that's a great lesson just to control yourselves and take a break. You can always do it again. So thank you so much for taking this time. I thank appreciate you. it. I've got so much to learn from this. Good. Thank you. I, I hope right. to see you soon in, in whatever activity we do together once this special situation all over the world changes and allow us to travel. Yeah, I look forward to seeing you again. Thank okay. you. Thank you. Bye.